I've sold tons of different product niches on my journey to over 4.5 million in sales on Amazon FBA. And in this video, I'm going to walk through seven hot niches for 2024. I'm going to go over the pros and cons of each as well as some specific tips, tricks, and strategies. So make sure you guys watch this entire video so you can build a diversified catalog of products to sell on Amazon in 2024. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Miles. I'm a 25 year old seven figure Amazon seller on a mission to help as many of you guys as possible build the side hustle or business of your dreams this year, flipping name brand products with Amazon arbitrage. Let's get right into the product niches. The first niche I want to talk about is the beauty category. Beauty products are an excellent category to sell on Amazon because women love buying beauty products and they buy them all the time. They might restock the same makeup several times a year, which provides tons of opportunity for you as an Amazon seller. Beauty products tend to be really cheap. They have a low average sale price. So it's an easy niche to get into even if you don't have a lot of capital. I do want to preface though throughout this entire video though that you're going to carry all different types of products within your store as an Amazon arbitrage seller. So don't think you only need to sell one specific brand or one specific category. You're going to end up finding profitable products in all of them because at the end of the day, it is just a data game in terms of what you can find profitable. Another thing I like about the beauty category is that there isn't really any main brands that dominate it. Therefore, the brands that do exist, they're typically smaller and there's not a lot of big beauty retailers. There's Ulta, there's Sephora, for example. But other than that, a lot of the products just come directly from the brand website. Therefore, you know where the inventory is coming from. So take the Glossier brand, for example, a brand I see a lot of different resellers carrying. We know for the most part that inventory is probably coming from the Glossier website. So all we need to do is create an account on the Glossier website and then they're going to email us every time they have a deal going on. And then we know Oh, there's a good chance we're going to find some of those products profitable if we go ahead and cross reference over to Amazon. Another thing is that a lot of these brands are smaller, so they don't have tons of different products. Take Adidas, for example, it has tens of thousands of different products that sell fast on Amazon. Glossier only has a few dozen, so it can be a little bit easier to narrow down on the best specific products and find them profitable because you know where that inventory is coming from. A major downside of the beauty category, specifically for arbitrage sellers, is that it has a low average sale price, which can make it a little bit difficult to scale when you consider that order cancels are the main bottleneck for online arbitrage. So there's not a ton of websites you can go ahead and order tons of specific product from because like I said, most brands only come from either the brand website and Ulta or Sephora or just the brand website. So it can be hard to pump volume and there is going to be some wholesale competition specifically. The nice thing is if you're watching this video, you're serious about selling on Amazon, you probably plan on doing wholesale down the line. So you'll be able to take advantage of those wholesale specific brands when the time comes. Don't sleep on beauty stuff. The nice thing is that it's also an auto ungate category. So you're just going to need to ungate each brand. The cool thing is because we know most brands only come from the brand website, that's where we're going to use to ungate them. So if you find a profitable product on Amazon, you just need to buy 10 from that brand website, then use that order confirmation email to get ungated. The second niche is going to be the shoes and clothing category. What I like about this category specifically is that there are some flagship brands that dominate the space like Under Armour, Nike, Adidas, Puma, New Balance, Brooks, ASICs, et cetera. There's these massive brands that you can get on gated in once, and then it gives you access to thousands or even tens of thousands of specific products to go ahead and sell. Because these brands are larger, they're carried on tons of different websites, which drastically increases your chances of being able to find specific items profitable, both for online arbitrage and for retail arbitrage at the outlets. If you have an outlet mall near you, that's a fantastic opportunity to take the seller amp app and go in and scan as many products as possible. These brands are going to be gated for the most part because they are some of the biggest arbitrage friendly brands on the platform. However, the nice thing is there's not really wholesalers that sell this stuff the way that there are mainly with beauty and grocery and health and house types of products. So the nice thing is there's not going to be wholesale competition, which provides a ton of opportunity as arbitrage sellers. You are going to need to ungate each brand, which luckily can be done using any big retailer. And the average sale price for these products tends to be a lot higher, leading it to be easier to scale. A major downside of these types of products is that customers do tend to return them a lot more than beauty and grocery products, for example. However, if you're padding your ROI criteria correctly, that's not going to be too much of an issue. You just need to make sure you're tracking the return rate on the products you're selling to making sure you're not losing any money after returns on certain products, which shouldn't be an issue if you're doing that correctly and utilizing all your coupon codes, discount codes, cash back, the free coupon extensions, etc. Number three is going to be the toy niche, which is one of the sexiest categories on Amazon because there's tons of Bolo, aka be on the lookout for products, which is basically a super hot item. Every Q4 in December, there's a massive Bolo toy item that everyone hops on and makes a bunch of money on. It is important to note that there is money to be made on toys year round. 
However, a lot of the big toy brands are sold by Amazon themselves, which means that year round, for the most part, Amazon themselves really dominates the toy category in a way that they don't with a lot of other brands. However, typically in Q4, Amazon will go out of stock and the price on a lot of toys will go to the moon, which does show that there is a ton of opportunity with the toy category specifically in Q4. I'm not a huge fan of a year round unless an opportunity falls into your lap, except during retail arbitrage clearance season in January, February, as well as August. It is important to note there is a community of Amazon sellers online that are a big fan of the buy and hold strategy because typically the toy category, they cycle new products in as different you know, toys get hot or different movies come out licensing wise specifically. So there is a massive arbitrage buying and holding toys like Lego and different you know, superhero movie toys, etc. However, I'm not personally a fan of that strategy. I like quick flipping my money. That totally does work though. So the toy category, mainly going to be a thing during Q4, or if you want to practice the buy and hold strategy, not a specific niche that I focus on too much. However, if you're doing what you should be doing, at the end of the day, it is just data. And if a toy lead comes in your lap that looks good, keep a chart data checks out, selling ramp data checks out, get on it. The fourth niche is going to be seasonal products. Take baseball products, for example, right now, being that it's baseball season or summer themed products, being that we're getting into summer soon. Backpacks during back to school, calculators during back to school, or tours during Q4, et cetera. One of the goaded seasonal products of all time was pools during what happened in 2020 and 2021. No one wanted to go to their local community pool. And if you look at the Kiba charts, the sales rank absolutely plummeted, which means that demand got way better and the price absolutely went to the moon. There's always something popping off and seasonal products are a little bit more finite in that they're not really going to be evergreen and replenishable. However, over a long enough time scale, there are going to be lots of opportunities to go ahead and repurchase the same products again and again. If you go ahead and look at any CRAN list and you go to the data offers tab on Keepa, you're going to see that there's sellers that have been selling crayons for like five years on Amazon. So even if they aren't replenishable month after month, they are replenishable year after year. The cons of selling seasonal products that was yours are going to be chasing the new thing. But if you take a look over the long term, year over year, you are going to be able to buy a lot of the same products. If you go and take a look at like a Thanksgiving playlist, and you'll see every year the sales rank goes way up when it's not Thanksgiving and the sales rank goes way down when it is Thanksgiving and the demand picks up. I love the idea of seasonal products, especially if you're a new seller, just go on Amazon and search specific keywords for a certain type of product. Like for example, once we get into July and August, if you search Nike soccer on amazon.com, you're going to see what the Amazon algorithm is showing customers who are searching those keywords. And that's going to mean resellers are making money on that stuff. And that's going to be the type of product you want to take a look at. Number five is going to be the grocery category. Grocery is a great category for sellers because some products you can't even return them. The problem is grocery products tend to be really heavy. And just the way the supply chain and expiration dates work, there's not a ton of opportunity for online arbitrage specifically with grocery. However, retail arbitrage at Ollie's or the grocery outlet or wholesale opportunities with local distributors are phenomenal for grocery. One pro tip for grocery products specifically is to not only focus on single packs, but also look into multi-packs. So if you scan a product with seller amp in store and it looks decent, it's profitable or it's close to being profitable, man. Manually type in the title with the word like two pack, three pack, four pack, and you should be able to find some additional opportunity. So grocery is great due to it being easy to get into, very accessible with retail arbitrage. Not going to be as much of an online arbitrage thing, but if you live in California and have grocery out, hit it up and check it out, scan all the grocery products. Number six is going to be electronics. Electronics are great for RA, OA, and wholesale. So they span all three types of categories. I don't have a ton of experience selling electronics, but relatively similar to toys, I do see Amazon carrying a lot of it themselves, but I do see a ton of opportunity with electronics, specifically on listings Amazon isn't on or on listings where Amazon is sharing the buy box a lot. Electronics similar to shoes and clothing do have a little bit higher of a return rate. However, the average sale price is really high, which makes them very scalable, specifically for online arbitrage where order cancels may be a constraint. And the cool thing is with all these different types of niches, as you guys are doing online arbitrage, arbitrage and storefront stalking, you can see the exact categories that seller carries. So you can go ahead and filter into the different categories they carry within their specific store. And you'll notice most sellers 
focus for the most part on a main subset of brands and ideally on certain categories, but they're not going to say no to certain stuff. So you'll notice this the more you do storefront stocking. So the pros of electronics are the high average sale price and now there's a ton of opportunity in it year round. The cons are that Amazon carries some of them themselves and the return rate can be a little bit higher. And the seventh niche for 2024 is sporting goods. The nice thing about sporting goods is there's a large seasonal element to it and there's always different sports going on. And anytime a specific sport happens, like for example, in the coming months, soccer, football, volleyball, again into July and August, demand spikes. Sporting goods are very similar to shoes and clothing in that they're dominated by big brands like Adidas, Under Armour, Puma, etc. Which means that there's not a lot of ungates to do, but you are going to be required to submit email confirmations or invoices to get those ungates done. They're not the most replenishable things in the world month over month, but they are incredibly replenishable year over year, and you can take advantage of massive demand spikes, competition shooting down when the demand spikes, and big price increases. Similar to seasonal and toys, there's going to be a ton of opportunity in merch and fulfilling these products during those finite seasonal opportunities. My best advice to source seasonal products is storefront stocking, looking at the sellers in the data buy box statistics on Kiba that took advantage of those products in past years using the 365 day view. So sporting goods is an excellent category to take advantage of. The cons are definitely going to be slightly higher return rates and lack of replenishability on a month over month basis. However, there's always certain sports popping off. And the cool thing is lots of sellers take advantage of those different sports each season. So you can storefront stock those sellers and find them each time around. If you go ahead and storefront stock off the baseball listings right now, you'll find sellers who are taking advantage of baseball products that are profitable right now and future sports seasons in the future. To summarize this entire video, guys, it's really important to note that in all different business models, there's products that are profitable in each of these different categories. Beauty, grocery, and electronics are going to be predominantly wholesale sellers. However, there's tons of opportunity with retail arbitrage and online arbitrage for those as well. And then shoes, clothing, seasonal, toys, and sporting goods are primarily going to be arbitrage categories, although there will be wholesale and brand direct opportunities specifically within those categories. They just happen to mainly be arbitrage, but it's much more on a brand by brand basis, and it's important to understand that. Speaking of seasonal opportunities, back to school is right around the corner. I'm filming this right before Mother's Day. We got Mother's Day coming up and then Father's Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July, and eventually Prime Day in July, and then back to school, and then eventually Q4. If you guys are looking to partner up and work directly with me to take full advantage of those opportunities, now is the perfect time to apply for my coaching program if you're looking for personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with myself, all my favorite coupons, tips, tricks, strategies, deals. You want to get on a live sourcing call one-on-one -on -one with myself on Zoom, as well as three group coaching calls per week. You want to be around other sellers that are crushing the game, check out the link down below for my coaching program. And I'll also leave up on screen now my full ungating tour as well as my full free course. If you're looking for additional free content, make sure to subscribe. Let me know any questions down below. I love to help you guys grow your businesses and I'll see you guys in the next one.